Well, let's talk about stuff because after, oh void, we're talking. We're talking. After the number two overall pick was made, which again, we are watching the draft live on the Twitch and it's, and it's great. Um, Owen Power going number one to the Sabres. Makes sense. Whatever. Uh, Beneers going to Seattle. Again, two good picks. Can't complain about anything. I'm a fan of both of those picks. How, how could you not be? A couple of things. And again, I'll get more in depth with some of this stuff tomorrow with Deej on the podcast. Because there's a lot of stuff to go in depth with. Right? There's a ton. I want to say... First and foremost, before we talk about today's trades, Friday's trades, um, I haven't gotten a chance really to say it in uh, in audio or video form. Uh, fuck the Chicago Blackhawks. In um, response, of course, to the further news that came out in regards to that organization being rotten to its absolute core. So, yeah, fuck the Chicago Blackhawks. And my God, if, if nothing happens to that organization, I, I just, I, I don't understand how. Like pure nepotism at its finest if there's nothing there. Like something has to happen. And thankfully for all of us, nothing happened until the Blackhawks fucked up their own organization with the worst trade I can remember in a very, very long time. We're going to skip this one for the moment. The worst trade I can remember in a very, very long time. The worst. So God bless Stan Bowman for that. Seth Jones, you want to talk about acquiring defensemen and hoping that they're better with Ristolainen, and I'll talk about that in a second, that works, sure. But, with Seth Jones, are we going to claim he was on a bad Blue Jackets team and that's why his metrics are shit? No. Seth Jones is arguably the most overrated player in the league. You drop from 12th to 32nd, you give up an extra second, oh, and another first, a conditional first. And Adam Boakvist. I'd take Adam Boakvist over Seth Jones easily. So not only do you give up all that, but you then sign Seth Jones as of the end of the, uh, five days from now, I think it is, to an eight-year oh, extension for you. at 9.5 million per. Legitimately, I have watched my team, the Boston Bruins, trade away Tyler Sagan. I don't think anything compares to that. That trade is... Absolutely abysmal. There is no defending it. it. I mean, hey, maybe a few years from now we're like, oh man, Seth Jones really turned it around. But is that the player you really want to base it on? Do you really want to sit there? I guess Chicago does to be like, nah, we're going to get Seth Jones to turn it around. Good luck with that. Good luck is all I can say. As the Ducks are about to make the third overall pick. We'll see what happens here really quickly. Oh, goodness. And Mason McTavish goes third. Little bit off the board, but someone with a pedigree. Little bit off the board, but again, this draft is this draft, so I'm not really all that surprised. Nor do I think it's a horrific move. I mean, he was a consensus top 10 pick. So, I, I don't hate I don't hate that McTavish pickup. I get the idea that, um, you know, some people might say, oh, go for Eklund, but I don't hate that for Anaheim. We'll see what New Jersey does, though. New Jersey's probably pretty happy about that. CBJ at number 5 is probably pretty happy about that as well. Again, we'll continue to talk about everybody else there, but again, if you want... My quick and early thoughts on some of the deals that have happened today. Fuck the Chicago Blackhawks and LOL to the Chicago Blackhawks. Again, this this Jones move, the extension at nine and a half million. Are you fucking joking me? Big shout out. Now look again. Analytics can't sit there and dictate hard and effort, desire and leadership. 
A big shout out to friend of the channel, Jay Fresh, of course, at Jay Fresh Hockey on Patreon, to get a lovely tool like this at your disposal. There's Adam Boakvist's general numbers. Again, two year sample size, third pairing guy, solid young offensive defenseman. I'm not going to move the cam for the full info. You got to pay for it. The gist is solid young defenseman at 20 years old. And here's Seth Jones at 26 playing number one minutes. And indeed, Jay Fresh has shared stuff like this on Patreon. GG, Chicago. GG's. God, you deserve nothing better. Nothing better. Call it salt over 2013 if you want. Get bent, Chicago. Get bent. <laughs> that organization, I'm sorry. Amazing fans. One of the, in terms of diehard hockey fan bases, Fans of the Chicago Blackhawks are among the best sports fans in the world. Any critiques or criticisms here are not shots at anybody in particular for supporting that team. The actions or lack of action from that team, nothing to do with you. It's not your fault. Fuck the Chicago Blackhawks for every bit of news that has come out. And again, I will continue to laugh. And yes, I have a Patrick Kane jersey on the wall. I do. I do indeed. Until the Chicago Blackhawks eventually get moved, like they should, and then that becomes a collector's item that I can sell for more profit, because I'm going to make a profit off of that garbage organization. Why would I not? Why would I not? Fuck them. Make me money, you scumbags. It'd be one of the good things you've actually done. Imagine. That said, wanted to also take a look here. Some of the other quick thoughts. Again, Deej and I will go in-depth on a lot of this stuff on tomorrow's podcast. We're recording early Saturday. It'll be up Saturday afternoon. Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever. It'll be up on Monday in video form because, again, I'm leaving this weekend, taking the weekend off for the first time in God knows how long. I love this move for Columbus to get Jake Bean. Everyone's like, oh, man, Seattle, why haven't you? Why didn't you take Jake Bean? And I like Morgan Geeky, but I agree. Why didn't you take Jake Bean? Good for Columbus. For Carolina, you get a, you know the 44th overall pick for an RFA. That's pretty good. But Carolina, you let go of Jake Bean and you let go of Alex Nedeljkovic. Leveraging the future just a little bit. We'll see. The Arizona-Vancouver deal. This trade broke when I was uh, in the car... <laughs> On the way back from uh, hiking. That's right. Despite this fat face, I do get outdoors every once in a while. I love this deal for Arizona. How could you not? How could you not? Roussel, Beagle, Erickson. If I'm not mistaken, they're all on the last year of their deal. Indeed, the last year for Roussel, last year for Beagle, last year for Louis. How, how could you not? How could you not like that? You get the ninth overall pick. Which is great, because again, you don't have the 11th overall pick. You also get a second next year and a seventh in 2023. You get rid of Oliver Ekman Larson, which is huge. I mean, I have the OEL jersey right there as well. Um, but again, everybody knows like he's not the player he was five years ago. <clears throat> cough, cough, not the player he was five years ago. Uh, so, you know, retaining on him, no big deal. They can afford to do it. And Connor Garland, they just didn't seem to want. And I don't know why. I really like Connor Garland. I was hoping at the start of the day he'd end up on the Bruins. He didn't. It is what it is. Um, I think he's a pretty good fit for Vancouver, though. So, I mean, for Vancouver, if you remove the picks, you're like, oh, cool. We get rid of all this trash. Maybe OEL can turn it around. And, hey, at least we got Connor Garland. Problem with Connor Garland, of course, is that he's an RFA who hasn't signed yet. So, get ready to pay up. As it looks like Luke Hughes. Come on. Luke Hughes to New Jersey. Get the Hughes brothers. They did it. They took Luke Hughes. Let's go. New Jersey. Big winners. Big winners. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, Vancouver just needs to trade Quinn. That's fantastic that they took Luke Hughes. That's incredible. That's awesome. I love that. 
I love that. That's, I mean, obviously a big, you know, crowd pleasing move as well. And it makes a lot of sense. New Jersey, you know, they do need that extra bit of um, defense as well. Not that I wanted to go uh, necessarily directly to cap friendly. I was going to go uh, more so to elite prospects, but you look at who they have in the system. Ethan Edwards, Drew Hellickson's a long shot. Case McCarthy, Mooka Madulin. Uh, they needed some defensive effort, uh, some defensive reinforcements. So it makes sense. So that's awesome. I love that pick for New Jersey. Again, to, to round out this deal, though, really good for the Coyotes. Kind of shit for the Canucks. Garland's great, but now you're stuck with that, and you got to hope he figures it out. Good luck. And I get it. Now they have, like, 18 million in cap space. I mean, you got to sign Dickinson, Garland, Patterson, Hughes. Have fun. Have fun, Vancouver. Have fun. Um, the Rangers trade today with the Blues as well, just to note that. I like Sammy Blay a lot. You get a second round pick next year for him as well. I think that's a really good deal for the Rangers in that we will see what they do with the cap space. For the Blues, Pavel Buchnevich should be great. Especially if Jaden Schwartz leaves, you have a direct replacement, if not better. So that's awesome. And on the flip side, I mean, again, even if you keep someone like that, you know, if you, if you keep Jaden Schwartz and have Bushnevich, that's sick. Uh, what happens to Tarasenko? Who knows? Are they out now on Landeskog? I don't know. But that's a huge pickup for the Blues. It's an improvement on Sammy Blay. The Rangers, though, again, you shed a bit more cap. They have almost $22 million in space. They have a shitload of draft picks in this draft. And in terms of re-signing players, uh, Philip Hedl, Libor Hayek, Chesterkin, who will be a couple mil. They are going to be able to do some damage here. Whether or not it's in free agency, or maybe that Jack Eichel trade happens. But the Rangers are in an incredible spot, and I've said as much on the podcast, the Rangers are going to win a Stanley Cup within the next decade. And yeah, if they can figure out this defense. Here's the thing. Uh, you, you talk about, like, whoa, what team needs to be uh, you know, the most aggressive in terms of UFA defenders? It needs to be the Rangers. Again, that forward core, playoff caliber, for sure. You are not going to make the playoffs with Adam Fox leading the way. Jacob Truba, he's inconsistent. And then you have Lindgren, Miller, maybe Zach Jones, Hayek. Like, it's just, it's too young and inexperienced. You can, you can jump the line here if you look at defense. And depending on... Who the hell you go for here? And I uh, didn't want to look at signings. Wanted to look at... You will close out of signings. Wanted to look at the UFA defenseman here. Because, again, there are some damn good options. Like, if you're the New York Rangers, don't know if you necessarily want Tyson Berry. Depends on the contract you can get him on to be a power play specialist. Should the Rangers be interested in Dougie Hamilton? Yes. Martinez, maybe. Yandel, <laughs> But, I mean, there are defensemen out there that can make this team significantly better in a hurry as long as they spend that money wisely. So I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see what the Rangers do here. I mean, I get the talk of, like, oh, Jack Eichel. They need, they need defense more than anybody else. They need defense. So we'll see what happens there. But I like that deal for both teams. <laughs> Again, if you miss me breaking down one of these trades, I'll probably upload this to YouTube, and Deej and I will talk about it on the show tomorrow. I don't, I don't understand. I don't. You get rid of Shane Goss to spare to bring in Rasmus Ristolainen. I, I thought for Philadelphia... Now, look, I'm not saying it's going to work out horribly. I thought for Philly, though, I'm like, hey... You got Ryan Ellis, who's fantastic. With Proveroff, with Sanheim. You're going to get rid of Ghost Bear. Okay. You're bringing in Ristolainen on a prove it. Again, as DH calls it, the Great Fog of Buffalo. The Great Fog of Buffalo. How good is Rasmus Ristolainen actually? And DH has made those points, too. He's a big guy, he's a physical player. 
If he doesn't have to be the guy, how good may he be? We'll see. Ellis is overrated. Strongly disagree. So, big, big fan of that. Big fan of that, uh, of that return for the Sabres. To be honest. I mean, Robert Hague's just a fill-in, but they got the 14th overall pick. And a second rounder in two years. How can you possibly be mad at that? Like, that's a really good deal for Buffalo. Who the hell would have thought they would have gotten the 14th overall pick? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. That's a great deal for Buffalo. For Philly, we'll see. I mean, it's literally, this trade is wishful thinking. Uh, this trade here, wishful thinking. Certainly wishful thinking. It's a tough call. It's a real tough call. Uh, and then you had other stuff like the Pitlick trade, which, I mean, whatever. I, I don't really understand why Calgary wanted him all that much. I, I don't. Um, I, I don't understand. This broke while I was at the dentist's office. Uh, prepping to get a tooth pulled. That was that was a fun time. I actually didn't feel a thing. It was great. I mean, I get it. The, the Hurricanes didn't want to pay Nadelkovich off of a short sample size as Kent Johnson goes to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Again, not surprised at all that Yarmo didn't go with a Swede or a Finn. He just, that, that just doesn't seem to be their style. Uh, I very much am predicting William Eklund goes sixth to the Detroit Red Wings here. Although, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, who knows? Whoever Eiserman wants might still be on the board. Eklund will probably fall to one of the two California teams at uh, 7 or 8. So, but yeah, shout out to Ken Johnson. Shout out to Ken Johnson. I like that pick. I mean, again, the problem is with these picks, it's like, okay. You know, you have a couple guys, like the 8th and ninth ranked prospects are off the board before pick number 6. We'll see. You knew this draft was going to have some of those moves where it's like, okay, well, how exactly is that going to go? Um, again, Carolina not wanting to pay for Nadelkovich, getting Bernier. I like Jonathan Bernier a lot. Bernier is great. Bernier is a primary example of my argument against teams like Montreal with Carey Price and other teams that have goalies with great reputations, but they're not getting the results. Everyone says, oh, well, if the team was better. Jonathan Bernier has been great behind a god-awful Detroit team. Jonathan Bernier behind the Carolina defense, even if Dougie Hamilton's not there, Carolina's still a playoff team next year. Jonathan Bernier is probably going to have a great year. It's just giving up Nadelkovich. We'll see. At face value, it's pretty brutal. But I do like the deal for both teams. Uh, Philly, again, you give up a second rounder and a seventh rounder next year. And Shane Goss to spare to bring on Risto, who is $1 million more expensive than Ghost Bear. I guess it's a, well, we know what we have with Ghost Bear. We don't know what we have with Risto. Good luck. And then again, uh, last one we'll talk about, because Deej and I talked about uh, the Ellis trade and such on the podcast. Um, I think that actually I talked about the Andrew Ladd trade too on the podcast. But again, it, it's great for the Coyotes. I mean, literally, you talk about who has who has won the most recent um, couple of days. Look at these deals for the Coyotes, man. I mean, again, you get rid of OEL, you get a ninth overall pick out of it. You get Shane Gostas Bear and picks for nothing. You get a shitload of picks for nothing, just taking on Andrew Ladd. You got a second round pick for Aiden Hill. And, of course, even dating back to December of last year, they got a second-round pick for Derek Stepan. Like, imagine the Coyotes didn't totally screw themselves. Imagine they didn't totally screw themselves by scouting when they weren't supposed to, you know? And aside from that... Well, actually, here, let's... Uh, where is Arizona? Yeah, because they obviously uh, don't... They still have $19.5 million in cap space, too. They have a first, three seconds. They have five second-round picks next year. They're like me in franchise mode. I have my doubts about Bill Armstrong, but fucking hell. Five second round picks? What are you using, Trade Finder? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And again, apparently this talks about Kessel. Apparently this talks about Christian Dvorak. They have some players to sign. They have an entire defense that they have to sign. But... I mean, I don't hate where they are right now. I get the 
the optics of them being the team that everyone dumps bad contracts onto. I get that's not great, but everybody says it. What's the best way to rebuild in the NHL? Take other teams' trash, make them pay for it. That's exactly what they're doing. I don't see the issue with it. I get the idea, and again, the optics of the Coyotes being in a rebuild again, but nobody thought the Coyotes were going anywhere. Everyone said when they beat Nashville in the bubble last year, it was a fluke. And then this year, they didn't make it. So, yeah. Obviously. Let, you know, restart. Again, I have my questions about Bill Armstrong's ethics, but he's doing things the right way right now. So I don't hate it. Um, again, we'll, we'll go into all of that probably on the show uh, tomorrow again. Obviously, I'm ecstatic about the Taylor Hall extension. Four years, six mil is gigantic chef's kiss. Very, very happy about that. Like, you look at these two. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Um, obviously, the same concerns about the Barclay Goodrow deal. That could age very, very badly. Uh, Mike Smith, Edmonton, going back to that well. Yeah. Uh, and then again, the Seattle expansion... Like, look, I, I have my doubts as well. Um, I'll get into the full thing tomorrow. I have my doubts as well. The lack of draft picks, some of the questionable choices. My mock draft that I went over with, I'm going to mention the podcast again, talked about how I thought they would end up with a lot of cap space. But, you know, with the 8 by 20 year real for McAvoy, no. So the joke is, if Seth Jones is worth 9.5 a season, then guys like Kale McCarr and Charlie McAvoy are going to ask for 15, 20 million a season. And they'd be right to do so. <laughs> and they'd be right to do so. So, again, just wanted to get all of that out of nowhere. Would you rather have Hall at Jones' contract or Jones at Hall's contract? Hall at Jones' contract? Not even close. And you, you might call me a homer for that, but I mean. We know what Taylor Hall is. Taylor Hall doesn't have to get better. Seth Jones has to get better. I'd rather have to deal with a player's fall than have to deal with the realistic possibility of Seth Jones doesn't improve at all. So, we'll see what happens. Hot takes a plenty, I'm sure, according to some people. But, yeah. It's all when Power gets interviewed. Oh, Buffalo. Owen Power. Darlene. Can't wait to see if they trade Jack Eichel tonight. It's going to be great. 